The coup saga in Gabon has officially ended and by now most people think it was a pretty straightforward set of events. They have been quick to celebrate it as the end to the Bongo regime and family leadership which is laughable considering the coup was led by Oli Bongo's cousin. The truth is many people actually have no idea what the actual circumstances of the coup were. As always we've got you covered. We're going to tell you exactly what this coup was all about. But first, we'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and also leave a sub so our content can continue to reach wider audiences. The Gabonese Electoral Commission announced Bongo's re-election with 64.27% of the vote early on August 30th. Minutes later, the military seized the presidential palace in Libreville, and a dozen military personnel declared the end of Bongo's regime, with a military spokesperson claiming to speak on behalf of a Committee for the Transition and Restoration of Institutions, citing his irresponsible, unpredictable governance that had led to a continuous degradation of social cohesion, risking pushing the country into chaos. They also declared the recent election invalid, the dissolution of state institutions, and the closure of the country's borders. Army colonels and Republican Guard troops were among the officers spotted during the announcement. The military junta later installed Bryce Oligui, head of the Republican Guard, as provisional president. Oligui ordered Bongo's release on medical grounds a week after the coup, claiming he was free to leave the country for treatment. Bryce Clotier Oliguin Gamer, Gabon's current acting president is Oli Bongo's cousin and former close aide to Oli's father Omar Bongo. He was President Omar Bongo's aide-de-camp until his death in 2009. He afterwards worked as a military attaché in Gabonese embassies in Morocco and Senegal. In October 2018, he was recalled to Gabon, where he took over the Republican Guard's intelligence branch, the Directorate General of Special Services, from President Oli Bongo's half-brother Colonel Frederick Bongo. In April 2019, he was promoted to Brigadier General. In 2021, he relaunched Operation Mamba, a campaign to apprehend corrupt officials. And fast forward to 2023 following the Gabonese coup that deposed President Oli Bongo, the Committee for the Transition and Restoration of Institutions appointed Oligui as Gabon's interim president in an announcement broadcast on national television. He was afterwards seen riding on the shoulders of delighted army troops who referred to him as the president. Later that day, in an interview with Le Monde, he referred to Bongo as retired and claimed that the military staged the coup in response to growing discontent in the country following Bongo's stroke in 2018, his decision to run for a third term, disregard for the country's constitution, and the conduct of the election. Other generals later approved his designation as interim president, and he was publicly sworn in as transitional president at the presidential palace on September 4. In his inaugural address, he promised free, transparent elections but did not specify a date. The question is are we supposed to trust the words of a member of the Bongo family? Unless your reasoning is shaky it's clear to see that power has really left the Bongo family. It's not just a political affair but a family one as well. This view is also shared by Albert Ondo Osa, Gabon's main opposition leader. Albert Ondo Osa joined the cabinet in 2006 under President Omar Bongo and Prime Minister Jean Aignan. He served as the Minister of National Education and Higher Education, the Minister of Higher Education and Research, and the Minister of Scientific Research and Technological Development in that order. Following the death of President Omar Bongo Ondimba in 2009, he ran for the presidency. Six opposition parties formed Alternance 2023 in the run-up to the Gabonese general election on August 26, 2023. He was picked as the primary opposition candidate against Oli Bongo Ondimba after a discussion in the Alternance 2023 collective. Following the coup four days later, the election results were invalidated. He has stated that the entire coup had likely been orchestrated by Oli Bongo's estranged sister Pascaline Bongo. Pascaline is Ali's half-sister who is famous for once dating Bob Marley and subsequently Jean Ping. She held numerous positions in government under her father Omar but was kicked to the curb when her half-brother Oli became president. Pascaline Bongo was named personal advisor to the President of the Republic in 1987 and then Minister of Foreign Affairs in June 1991. Since 1981, President Bongo has delegated the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to close relatives. 
Pascaline's immediate predecessor in that position was her half-brother Oli Bongo, who was several years Pascaline's junior and therefore ineligible for a ministerial position due to a constitutional age restriction. Later that year, in her first address to the United Nations, she held the evacuation of Iraqi soldiers from Kuwait and expressed alarm over violence in South Africa. She praised South Africa's advances while emphasizing that more steps were required to completely remove the apartheid system. Noting the fall of socialism in Warsaw Pact nations, she stated that the world was changing rapidly, but she reaffirmed Gabon's position that the economic divide between wealthy and developing countries the global north and a south was the real problem. It's clear that Pascaline isn't Oli's biggest fan and many people have associated her with several coup attempts to oust him as president. Now to the real reason why you clicked on this video, if you like Oligui and you'd like to stage fake coup like the one in Gabon yourself then the road map is very straightforward. Step 1, get the military to back you despite the fact that the current leader is your cousin and if anyone suspects anything you can simply say you don't bear their family name hence the public can suspect you. Step 2, lock up your cousin in the comfort of his own mansion and post a clearly scripted video of him asking allies to quote, make noise to clear any doubts that he is actually under duress and you make him say a very vague statement such as making noise because you don't want any allies invading and ruining your perfect plan. Step 3, declare yourself president and promise transparent elections with no clear date in sight and just to make sure you continue the legacy once elections come around, you keep the same cabinet as your ousted cousin. Step 4, you continue the same regime as your cousin but this time you have the support of the general public and if the international community exclaims in outrage, you can simply release your cousin from house arrest with him seemingly quietly stepping aside for your new regime. With that said there's one more question we need to answer. Why stage the coup and why not just do a real coup? The answer comes down to cognitive perception and psychology. Why do an actual coup when for most people as long as the president doesn't bear the bongo name it's all fine and good? It's worth noting that despite the ousting of the Oli Bongo he remains Oligui's cousin and has been officially removed from house arrest without a single charge, not even electoral malpractice or fraud which is strange considering the circumstances of the coup. Nevertheless, this is all speculation and we would allow you to make your own conclusions. Do you think the coup genuine or staged? Let us know in the comments. Also please leave a like and a sub so our videos can get recommended to even more people. See you guys in the next one.